Crown Produce secures produce locally and from around the world for Canadian retailers. Crown Produce is also proud to secure sponsorship of University Football on Shaw. Crown Produce, supporting Canadian retailers and Canadian amateur football. Jewett, Dunsmore, Gates, Hardy. The conference championships as Crown Countdown News starts counting down now. Hey everybody, welcome to Crown Countdown U. I'm Ryan Sullivan and that's Andrew Wadden. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Let's start in the RCQ. And juice dip palm and vulu vajit and honey. Oh, perfect. Bang on, spot on, Francais. Yeah. It's not bad, I've been practicing. Who knew? <coughs> so, RSEQ Dunsmore Cup. Montreal is 0 for 4 in Dunsmore Cups all time. Also 0 for 4 all time in Dunsmore's against Laval. They're in Laval. Let's see if they can slay that dragon. It was a chilly November day at Peps. The Carabao visiting the defending CIS champ, the Laval Rouge A or sporting their black alternate unis on this day. Opening possession of the game, and it's Alex Skinner hitting Guillaume Ryu in stride. Ryu then finds the edge, picks up a solid gain of 28 yards. Laval moving early on in this one, and it leads to a Boris Bidet triple. Rouge or strike first, it's three blank. However, on the ensuing Montreal possession, Gabriel Cousineau hits Philip on chill for a nice gain of 16. He then looks end zone, and he cannot find Maxime Fournier Ryu. However, flags fly, it's PI on the D. Montreal getting away with one here, if you ask me. A fairly weak call, but nonetheless, it results in Manuel Crissy Lezon going into beast mode and bulldozing his way through the pile into the red painted big grass. Touchdown Montreal and the blue and white travelers. They are loving it in enemy territory. Felix Menard Briere into punt for Montreal. And well, it's a good thing he warms up that leg. He'd use both of them actually to run out of the back of the end zone. Two points for Laval on the safety. Under four minutes later, he would do it again. Menard Briere this time shakes things up a little, heading to the back corner of the end zone. He fakes it. No, he's, he's going to run out of bounds. Laval another free two points. Magically and astonishingly, the Caravan let Laval tie the game free of charge. Alex Skinner then on second down finds Felix Leschassar down the sideline and a result in not only a nice gain, but another Boris Bidet triple. Then, before the half is over, from their own 22-yard line, Menard Briere decides, eh, I don't think so, no. Another safety. Unbelievable. Montreal should have led 7-6 at the half, but because of the freebies, they trailed 12-7 after two cues. Second half, and Cousineau finds Fournier Ryu down the right side. This result in a Menard Briere triple. Montreal now trails by just one point. However, inside three minutes to go, and well, yeah, you guessed it. Takes a knee, another safety. They would get one last chance, however. Cousineau takes his time, looks deep down the field, and he is picked on the prayer. Laval wins their 11th straight Dunsmore Cup 14 to 11. Your final score from Peps. Montreal is now 0-5 in Dunsmore's and is 0-5 against Laval in all of those Dunsmore trips. Gabriel Cousineau was 21 of 40 for 242 yards, no touchdowns, and two picks. Alex Skinner, 15 of 25, 242 yards as well, no touchdowns as well, two picks as well. So the Montreal D played the passing game not too bad. The D wasn't trusted enough though because the team took an unprecedented four safeties. In terms of team scoring, Montreal actually would have won this game 11 to 6. However, thanks to the eight free points given up to the Rouge Or on their home turf, well, we know what happened. Mount A back in the Loney Bowl. Most of the players on the team weren't even out at kindergarten the last time they were there. Yes, it was 1997. However, they are facing SMU, a team they have defeated twice this season. Would we get thrice from the Mounties? 
Let's head to Halifax and find out. The Salty Dogs hosting the Cinderella Mounties in Halifax. Mount Allison riding a four game winning streak going into this game. And we'll pick it up late in the fourth queue. Visitors down 17 to 10. That was until Brandon Lay connected with Josh Blanchard. JB climbs the ladder for a 34 yard TD. Huskies next series, Jack Creighton over the middle. Tay Nguyen says, I'll take that. Scampers the pigskin for 13 yards, which sets up this. Under a minute remaining, Cal McLean with the game and a trip to the UTEC on his foot. It's good. Mount A's off to the UTEC Bowl with a 2017 win over SMU. AUS Heck Creighton nominee Jordan Botel carried the load for the Mounties in this one, rushing for 133 yards on 24 carries. Lay with a solid performance in the win, but it was McLean who was the man of the moment for Mount A, nailing that 25 yarder in the final minute to seal the win. Mount A takes the Jewett Trophy for the first time since 1997. They will play host to Laval on Saturday at McCauley in the national semifinal, also known as the UTEC Bowl. The two best teams in Ontario facing off against each other in the Yates Cup, the oldest trophy in football. Last time Western played Queens, they put a 50-burger on them. Will Queens be able to bounce back against those mighty Purple Ponies? So it's off to the campus of the number one team in the nation we go. The Gales taking to the field at TD Waterhouse, the home to those purple ponies, the unbeaten Western Mustangs. Stang star QB Will Finch facing off against that man, the Gales gunslinger himself, Billy McPhee. Early first cue and Western gets a scare. George Johnson oh, yeah, takes yeah, one off his fingertips. He goes down for a minute. However, he did return. Score now six to five. Western goes to work. Finch goes deep for Matt Uren. That put the Purple Ponies in the red zone. And the Purple Ninja himself, Yannick Haru, caps off the drive. Western takes an eight point lead. McPhee then gets himself into trouble. Goes over the middle. OUA stand up defensive player of the year. Powell Kruba gets his bear paw on the pigskin. That's McPhee's second INT of the half. And it led to a Western three banger. Western's lead grows as well. And it would continue to grow. Finch airs one out. Once again, it's Uren who makes the outstanding grab. That is from the amazing variety. Check out the athleticism from the fourth year receiver. Get That's sweet. Yards. Western takes a 20-point lead a into the brew job. break. Second job. half, more of the same the from Uren. Another unreal grab puts the Purple Just Ponies back in Queens' yards. red zone. Very up. next play, Finch to Brian Marshall. Western. And you can put it on the board. Western starts to put the boots to the Gales. So all that's left is to present the oldest trophy in football. Western takes the eight, smacking the Gales 51-22. Will Finch with an outstanding game, but the man of the match was Matt Uren. Western moves on to the Mitchell to face the winner of Manitoba and Calgary. You could not have picked a better matchup for the Canada West Final. You've got Manitoba, you got Calgary, two first-year starter quarterbacks coming in off unreal seasons, two unreal running backs coming off fantastic campaigns, and one stadium that almost hosted a ZZ Top Aerosmith concert. And then it was cancelled. And they never returned. But the Hardy Cup wasn't cancelled. Let's get to those highlights. Manitoba Bisons in a clear and chilly cow town taking on the Dinos. Conditions far more favorable than last week. Calgary has won the last five parties, while Manitoba hasn't brought one home since 2007. Early on, it was Mercer Timmis with a huge gain up the middle to the left side a little bit. Moved the chain. He'd follow that up later in the drive with another gorgeous run. He heads right, and he carries the rock. Wee, 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 all the way home. Seven blank Calgary just a few minutes in. Manitoba in trouble then on second and seven. Yant scrambles to the outside as nobody, but he gets hit. Out of bounds, a little late. This gives the Bisons new life with the penalty. He then looked to Keenan LaFrance, who makes an unreal diving grab. Touchdown, Manitoba. It's 9-7 for Calgary. Gorgeous. 
Andrew Buckley and the Red guys would respond, though. He'd find Chris Dobko for a pair of solid gains. The latter one here, that one being the key catch and run. Then he'd turn to Jake Hardy, and this Hardy soup eats like a meal. Touchdown, Calgary. It's 16-7 for the prehistorics, and the fans, well, they're loving it at McMahon. More trouble for Manitoba. Jordan Yant scrambles to the outside. He has nothing. He gets dropped with the sack. They'd be forced to punt. And he would turn into an absolute gorgeous grab and run by Rashawn Simonize. 57 yards to the house. And then, well, you know, the, the effort's there. You know, that counts. Choreography, yeah, I could use a little work. Blake Neal get on that. Manitoba would get a stroke of luck to start the second half. Simonize, fresh off that major, can't handle the punt. Manitoba pounces on it, and just like that, the herd are back in business. Very next play, and Jordan Yance looks deep again, and he finds Andrew Smith from 19 yards out. Bison's trail by 12. It's 26-14 countdown. Mercer Timmis, though, what can you say about this guy? He goes for another gigantic run, a huge run. This one for 43 yards. What a day he had. It sets Calgary up nicely in Manitoba territory, and it also sets up a run for the backup RB, Juan Tai Lu. He takes it the rest of the way, a solid 42 yards. That's his first touchdown of the year, folks. Calgary leads 33 to 14. Manitoba down, but they're not quite out. Gantz connects deep with Nick Dembski, a 64-yard play. The herd are still breathing a little bit. Yance follows that up with another deep connection. This one's to Matt Sawyer, and though his mind is not for rent, Sawyer makes it a 36-21 ball game for the Dinos. Mercer Timmis, though, decides, well, I've had enough. Timmis breaks the tackle and has an open lane. Paging Dr. Goal Line, you are wanted in the end zone. Touchdown, Calgary Dinos. Dinos win 43-28. They take their sixth straight. Party trophy. Jordan Yance capping off a tremendous first year with the Bisons. Four touchdowns in this one. Mercer Timmis, though, oh man, the doctor of goal lines everywhere. Ran the ball 28 times for 279 yards, along with a pair of touchdowns. The kid is straight up unreal. With the win, Calgary now hosts the Western Mustangs in the Mitchell Bowl this Saturday from Calgary, Alberta. I'm going to lay down a bit of a wager. You put down the Queens thing last week, and mm -hmm. I ended up looking like an absolute idiot. Uh, maybe That's that was, not hard. Maybe that was two weeks ago. Time just goes a little quicker yeah, when whatever. you get a little older. Yeah. But uh, University of Calgary taking on Western here. UCAL, or the Dinos if you would like to call them that, okay. they win. i got to wear a bucket. They lose. i got to wear the you bucket. you got to wear a bucket. Not a problem at all. Probably make me look better. Yeah. Well, it'll probably just look like you have UC stickers on the side of your hair, but... Jerk. No? Yeah? No? Too many hair jokes? Whether it's your first home, a refinance, or an investment property, Kia Grant & Associates can find a mortgage solution for you. In association with Barrico Paragon, the work she does for you is free. Find her on Facebook at Kia Grant Mortgages. Now it's time for the three-minute warning brought to you by Kia Grant & Associates. This week, Miles Gurrell, the head of scouting for the Ottawa Red Blacks. You've had the opportunity to go right across the CIS and uh, see practically every team. Uh, sometimes there's a difference between strong programs and strong potential pro players. Uh, do you see a difference right now? We all know who the strong teams are, but are the strong players coming out of some different programs? Well, you, you see a lot of kids, uh, you know, coming out of, Guelph now, you see him coming out of Manitoba, uh, you see him, you know, you even get the Mike Filers and, uh, you know, uh, and Steve Middleton, you get Mike Filer out of Mount Allison, it's Steve, you know, or Steve Middleton out of uh, St. Francis Xavier, the Mwamba brothers out of Xavier, Akeem Foster, you're getting a lot more kids out of the East Coast that you never used to really see in the league because... A lot of guys didn't go down and see him, and the scouts are doing a much better job, and uh, the coaches are getting done and doing a much better job uh, getting them ready. Has the AUS started to close the gap on the rest of the conferences in Canada, or have they got a whole lot more work to do? 
Well, they got, they got some work to do, but it, it's all about recruiting. As is it is in the CFL, you have to uh, be able to recruit uh, across Canada from kids in the United States. You got to find those Canadians. Um, Laval does a great job of recruiting the kids that go down to the States, decide they do not like the process through the NCAA, and, and they end up, they're going to come back to Canada, and Glenn Constantine and his group there, they pounce on them right away. The AUS is doing a really good job. I mean, most of these kids I mentioned earlier in question, you know, like Middleton and Filer and, and Akeem Foster and the Muamba brothers are from the Toronto area, and they go out and they fall in love with uh, Andy Ganesh and Sackville and Wolfville and, uh, you know, even even Halifax. It's it's places that you've never been before. I mean, I asked Bob Cameron a long, long time ago, how the heck did he ever end up in Acadia? And he said, they phoned me up, they asked me if I'd come out there. I went out there, and it was just a beautiful place, and I absolutely loved it. And, you know, that's basically what more when more head coaches are doing. You know, Kelly Jeffries is uh, doing a great job in, uh, in Mount Allison, getting more kids to come there with better athletic abilities. Uh, and, and that's something that we have to do, uh, you know, at, at uh, with the Ottawa Red Blacks is we got to recruit kids to come to Ottawa. I and mean, it's not going to be a two, three, four year, uh, you know, sojourn there. They're going to want to come and stay there and move there and live there. You know, uh, Ottawa is a beautiful, viable city, you know, of 900,000 in the, in the metropolitan area, you know, with Gatineau. And it's a fun place to be. And uh, that's one of the things that we have to sell the kids on and. That, that's what you see a lot of NFL teams doing is selling their free agents, the area they live in and, and the facilities they have. Thanks very much for this, Miles. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Jim. We'll, I'll be waiting to read the rest of your stuff online. I love it. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Crown Countdown You. It's time once again for the round table, we have Jim Mullen on the end. We have Andrew Wadden in the middle. Billy Green, uh, close to me on my right. And now we're going to start things out with opening kickoff. Headlines from Championship Saturday. And we're going to start things out with Mr. Jimothy Mullen. Well, it's not exactly from Championship Saturday, but we are talking about something that could happen in June. And it's at the CIS convention where the CIS is seriously looking at doing away with the red shirt for players who come back from the NCAA. Uh, I think this is targeted at uh, any number of sports, women's hockey being one of them, basketball definitely being one of them, uh, making sure that Canadian athletes who are down at NCAA schools don't have to pay that penalty year if they want to come back to Canada. I don't think it's a good thing for football. I think when you're out recruiting for football, Canadian schools are competitive with NCAA schools right now outside of the very highest Division I schools. Uh, I think as you're a football coach and you're out there recruiting, you want to put the best team together and you want to create your own culture. You don't necessarily want to import culture from other places. If the CIS does follow through, through with this rule, I would certainly like to see them keep football aside and uh, penalize those players and make them uh, make the decision between, between an American school and a Canadian school coming right out of high school. Very nice. At Free Agent Soda. You know, I'm going to stick with something that basically everybody really already knows anyway, and that was the uh, fact that the Mount A uh, Mounties were able to knock off uh, St. Mary's and get themselves to the Loney Bowl, the first, or excuse me, win the Loney Bowl for the first time since 1997, get themselves to the UTEC Bowl. The biggest story, though, in my opinion, that's coming out of that is they're going to play at Macaulay. There was rumors that they were going to try and move the game, uh, whether or not uh, the sight lines were going to be right for the television crews that are coming into Macaulay. Uh, there was suggestion that they might move it to Halifax, but it ain't happening. It's going to be in Macaulay. Uh, Mount A is going to have to uh, play host, or going to get to, that is, play host to Laval, which might be an advantage for the Mounties, although it's going to be a, a tough game for them to win. But the biggest story, I think, that comes out of it is the fact that they get to host it, and uh, they've won their first Loney, uh, excuse me, AUS championships in Loney Bowl since 1997. So congratulations to Mount A, and good luck this weekend on your home turf. Billy Green. I think we all know that the skill position players get a lot of love on football teams through the media, uh, but I'm going to talk about the Calgary Dinos offensive line. Last weekend, they uh, led the rushing attack for over 300 yards, leading the way for Mercer Timmis for over 270. They're a great unit. They're going to be up 
uh, up against it this weekend against a good Western front. But I think they're a little bit underrated and they're going to show up really well this weekend. There you go. We're going to switch things over to objectionable conduct now. And I'm going to start things out for a change. Montreal Laval, the Dunsmore Cup. Montreal surrenders four safeties in this game, allowing Laval not only back into the game, but to win the game. They gave up eight points on running the ball out of their own end zone. Let's go to Andrew. That was grinding my gears all weekend. And it should grind your gears. And I'm just going to follow your lead with this, really. I mean, eight points given up in a 14 to 11 game. You lost by three points but you gave up eight of them. At one point, I think the kicker uh, was sitting at, there, see, the punter was sitting at the 20-yard line, was it? Yeah. And ran back into his own end zone. I mean, this is ridiculous. We talked about it last week. We've talked about it at nauseum throughout the year. Uh, J.P. Schwarre last week saying that it's just like almost an epidemic that's happening around the CIS. In my opinion, it's not really an epidemic around the CIS. It's more around the queue. And when you're giving up that many points in a game that uh, means so much, Montreal could have won it easily if they just had not given up those points. And, of course, they did, and now Laval's moved on once again. So, uh, Montreal, uh, the safety dance that you guys like to do, it's no friend of mine. <laughs> and to clarify, it was, it was snapped from about the 22-yard line. Punter was lined up about the 7 or 8, ran it back in. To be honest, it's an absolute embarrassment to CIS football. <laughs> the run back yeah. was really the most embarrassing part. The little scamper into the corner, whatever yeah. that was. Just get Punters down on the knee. Punters' pants are a lot anyway. tighter than other players because they can only move their legs so much. Apparently so. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay, we're going to go turn things over to Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, a lot of people got, a lot of guys out there love to chirp on the field. I'm all for it. Uh, throughout my five years, I was known to say a couple things on the field, but you have to know when to do it. You see it in the NFL all the time. Every play, guys are chirping at each other. Usually in a close game, you're getting your butt kicked out there, you should probably be quiet. There's a game on the weekend between Manitoba and Calgary. Manitoba is uh, known for talking a little bit, and they were getting beat by 25 points out there talking crap to the other team. You should probably know when to do it, and I, I don't agree with them doing it down 25 in a game. Well said. Jim Mullen. Well, let's see. My objectionable conduct uh, is against really coaches who select all-star teams because in a number of cases, they've done a terrible job this year. First of all, uh, in the AUS, how can you have a guy like Melvin Abankwa who leads your conference in all-purpose yards, who even had a bit of heck Creighton buzz for a while, not make an all-star team? In the Canada West, how can you have a guy like Tyler Henry who's taken it to the house twice on special teams and has tied a Canada West record for receptions, not make it to an all-star team. How can you have a guy like Alex Morrison, who led the Canada West in return yards in both kickoff and punting by a wide margin, not make it to an all-star team? I think there's stinking politics involved here. And you know what the solution is? Have a media panel select an all-star team. And that's exactly what I've put together for the Canada West this year. As we speak right now, we're putting together a Canada West all-star team selected by the media. And you can compare it between the media and the coaches. And you can put that in your pipe and smoke it. I like oh. it. I bank at the Bank of Melvin. I would absolutely throw him Take in there. Take it to the Abankwa. I, oh, I like that's it. his. That's is that, his. Is that yours? That's mine. I'll, I, <laughs> okay. I, I, will, I will own that. But this guy here is spitting hot fire right now. I don't know if I can sit here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty a little good. warm right now. You know now. what? It's, it's year after year where we see the coaches, for one reason or another, overlook a guy, especially in the Canada West, that deserves being on the all-star team. And because you only have six teams in the league, you don't have a second all-star team, well, guess what? We're making a second all-star team, and we have the opportunity uh, to repair some damage that's been done. Billy Green, game of the week. Going to have to go with Western at Calgary. Uh, a lot of buzz coming out of the Western front. They're, uh, they're on fire. That's basically all you can say about them. Uh, they've been running through the OUA like crazy. Uh, Calgary's been pretty quiet this year. Uh, I think they're a lot better than teams are giving them credit for. Uh, a couple keys to the game is going to be Calgary controlling the ball, keeping Will Finch off the field. Uh, that big old line that I talked about from Calgary is going to have to open up some holes for Mercer Timmis. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than people are uh, kind of chalking it up to be right now. I see uh, if Calgary can hang around, they may have a chance to win. Do you have a fever and the only prescription is more goal line? Well, I think that uh, the Calgary Dinos, I said it last week, they were going to get steamrolled by Western. The more I break this game down and the more I see the mercury fall in Calgary and, you know, it's going to be a snowy day there. It's going to be a cold day there. They have the ability to, to, to control the football. 
You've got a guy like Steve Barato, a former CFL head coach who knows offenses inside and out, and he's the one that's been working with that O-line that Billy was just talking about. And uh, that's been a key to their success. I, I mean, a lot of the praise is heaped on Mercer Timmis, but the blocking scheme they have, the way they brought in an H-back like Max Arrow to seal things off and create big gaps, and, and, and the left side of that offensive line, they are outstanding right now. So if they can control the ball in bad weather conditions and they can force Will Finch to use his legs instead of going to the air because of the cold weather, I think Calgary has a chance of staying close in this game. And we all know from, uh, from the past, it's always been hard for Ontario teams uh, to come into uh, Canada West and try to find a way to win. It goes back decades. Yeah, and for the record, I wouldn't keep the Dr. Goal Line name around for Mercer Timmis, but I've hold, heard through numerous sources that he really likes it, so we're going to keep it, keep it going for a little <laughs> while. Andrew Wadden, take us home. Game of the week. Yeah, I, I want to go with the AUS game. Uh, excuse me, not the AUS, the UTEC Bowl game between uh, the AUS champion, the RSAQ champion, uh, Laval, and, and, and Mount uh, A. Uh, I just don't really think it's going to be much of a game, though, and like I said, giving props to Mount A for just getting there. Uh, they do have to establish the run game. Jordan Botel, of course, uh, being one of the better backs in, in Canada. But I just, I just don't see them being able to do anything against this Laval team. So I am going to go with uh, Calgary and Western. Uh, I really want to see what Mercer Timmis is going to do. I had uh, someone chirp me on Twitter uh, about my Anthony Coombs pick, saying that Anthony Coombs should be the heck uh, Crichton nominee out of the Canada West. Well, let's see what Dr. Goldline is all about this weekend. Uh, Jim, of course, giving props to the offensive line, and it's true. They have an amazing offensive line in Calgary, maybe one that a lot of people didn't see coming this year, but now it's the true test. Now you're playing against the big boys, the Western Mustangs, so let's really see if uh, Dr. Goldline can live up to that name, because I know he loves it so much, and uh, we're just going to keep calling him it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mercer. <laughs> I, I, did, I did mention Big Red Truck once. Yeah, that's yeah, not too yeah, shabby. Yeah. That is not as too long as, he still is Dr. Goldline. Uh, as long as Simon Eyes... Uh, it's yeah. fitting. As long it's, as Simon Eyes doesn't do that dance again, uh, oh, I think grievous. we'll be all right. I, oh, yeah. I know, I know you've, I've seen the similar moves of yours at, at the Roxy. Yeah. So yeah. I know you're a little partial Donald to Narcisse with the choreography there is pretty good. <laughs> well, that'll do it for the roundtable, and that will do it for... Crown Countdown You. I'm Ryan Sullivan on behalf of Jim Mullen, Andrew Wadden, and Billy Green. Thanks for joining us. Here is Jim Mullen's Power Four. Number four, Mount Allison. Playing on the Macaulay Cow Pasture will slow down Laval, but not enough in Sackville on this Saturday. This football could be downed, dirty, and prehistoric. Number three, Calgary. Home field on the foothills brings snow and ice and prairie wind, not to mention a nasty O-line headline by Dr. Goal Line. Number two, Western. Yes, the Mustangs fall because Ontario teams have not won a bowl game in the West in over four decades. Their path to the final is much more difficult than number one, Laval. We all know we want to see them get their pretty white road unis completely covered in Macaulay mud before heading home for the final. Thanks for watching Crown Countdown U as Countdown has Countdown.